Mary Jane, good afternoon. Welcome to About That Time. We're very, very, very excited uh, to be here with some special guests. They're called the Underachievers. Uh, they have a new I'm single voice. out right now uh, called Seven Letters. They have a new album on the way coming out November 2nd uh, called After the Rain. Underachievers, thanks so much for coming through, guys. Thanks, thanks for having, having us, brother. Here we are, doing oh, our man. thing. Uh, living this LA life. Yeah. East Coast, on the West Coast, yep. doing the thing. How do you like it out here? You love it. I love it. It's my favorite place in the world. <coughs> favorite place in the world? World. <laughs> Was it like that from day one, or has it been a growing process i mean yeah after i seen a bunch of places in the world and yeah. i was like yeah this is the best place <laughs> but that's probably more places that i need to see okay okay is what's up is there a top five list here yeah definitely okay what's top on the top five, five? Places. to live to live to chill or just to visit london paris yeah australia australia cali um, california and uh, mexico <laughs> yeah <laughs> well bk bk getting no love huh i mean New I York mean, that's by homes. default, yeah. yeah. Like, if I was just to speak objectively, I'd say New yeah. York is the best place in the world, for exactly. sure. Exactly. Okay, okay. As well, long like, as it's clear that New York is number one, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without, like, a doubt. Like, it's the best city in the world, for sure. Not even, like, saying that now, but I just, that was just, like, default. Like, oh, you guys are from there, so besides there. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, so are you guys staying out here for the most part nowadays? She is. Yeah, I live, like, fucking 10 minutes away. Amazing. I still live in New York. Okay, Brooklyn, yeah. so are you guys sending sending tracks back and forth? That's kind of the creative process. Nah, are you guys yeah, trying to here doing tracks? <laughs> <laughs> he lives here. <laughs> yeah, our engineer is over here, so I come over here all the time and record the music. I got you. I like that. But you feel like the LA is bringing bringing the good vibes for you guys. Hell you feel yeah. creative yeah, sure. out here, yeah. doing your thing. Now, what would you say, like in terms of sort of when you guys were building your rep in New York versus sort of now with? Seeing, being a little more established, being out here, what's what's the energy like? What's what are the differences in the creative process? Um, well, in the creative process, I guess we got older. So, um, well, we were getting older, so like, uh, it's changed in terms of like what's important to us, so like what we make music about. I don't think like where we're. At. I never really got that. I, I seen someone say that shit yesterday. Someone said, um, "What the fuck was I watching?" Oh no, yeah, when I was with um, some friends, he said, um, some place is the best place to live. Ne never mind that. that, uh, that oh, he was saying, <laughs> he was saying some place in, uh, in Europe just has all this creative juices. I, just, I, I don't know what the fuck that means and shit. Like, I never knew, like, um, <laughs> like what one place has. Like, I can see you getting tired of, um, like, one place and the influences you get there and then wanting to get some more somewhere else. But like, yeah. I don't think one place is more creative than another, like, you know what I mean? All the creative juices, you're bringing the juices, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, it comes from here and shit. Absolutely. But I like, uh, particularly, I like the Cali energy for creating music. It's like way more chill vibe type of shit. Right. New York is, well, New York too, it's weird. It's different. It's different um, writing processes in both places. Uh, in New York, I get more experience from like chilling with my friends and doing shit. And I write about that. Right. And Cali is just on me in the environment, smoking weed or whatever. A hundred percent. Yeah. Now, how different is that? Was that after the rain process compared to other records you guys have done? Mm. I mean, it's a completely different uh, sound, I guess. Um, the process is. How would you similar. describe the difference in sound? Um, we use a lot of live instruments on this one. It's the all whole live. thing, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is live instruments, and we never did that before, really on our tracks. Yeah, it's like very jazzy and like a, I mean, we've done jazz stuff. It's like a bright, I don't know what's the right word for it, but it's like a brighter jazz and um, it's like very colorful. Um, so it was like different in terms of like approaching writing to those songs because it was a different um, palette to play with because of the sounds. Um, so that changed the creative process, but um, we had a general idea of like what we wanted to um, write it about prior to it. So it was just like once we linked up with um, these dudes named Brass Tracks, it's like a uh, like a duo from New York that like play like every instrument ever created and shit, and they're like a little band. And um, we linked up with them, we made a song, and we were just like, yo, we should turn this into a project. And so. Hence, they sent us a bunch. Well, we went and we listened to a bunch of stuff and we was like, we picked up our favorite 
out of all of like the 50 and then uh we just went home and just started writing right yeah and did it come to you guys quicker than previous times um i wouldn't say that but <laughs> maybe i don't know for not, me not really bro. yeah it just not came really naturally. um the beats brought out the lyrics for me like just hearing it inspired me to write some positive shit because it's like very positive uplifting like sounds and shit yeah. Also yeah. kind of feels like a time where positivity is Needed. a good thing to have. Yeah. Absolutely. Spreading those good vibes. Um, guys, we like to do something uh, on About That Time uh, where we make sure that our audience knows what's going on with you guys. We take some pictures from your Instagram uh, and you can tell us the story behind it. Uh, I think we have one here with Killer Mike. Uh, you guys are just chilling out, um, doing your thing. What, what, tell us the story behind this picture. <laughs> Where were yeah, we, bro? We are overseas yeah, think, somewhere. Like. We were doing some festival somewhere overseas. It's up on the screen, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, we are doing some festival um, overseas somewhere. It becomes a blur eventually in terms of, like, where you are. and uh, But it was somewhere in Europe, I think. And yeah, fucking... Yeah. Um, I don't think this was at the venue. I feel like this was, like... <laughs> I feel like it might have been... Because I remember seeing the homie earlier in the in the day. That Killer Mike? I mean, that Killer, uh, Killer Mike. Killer LP. Yeah. LP earlier, and he was showing us love. And then I feel like this was, like, backstage of the yeah, festival. Yeah, it, it has to be, yeah. Yeah. Because I won't... Um, this is mad long ago, too. Yeah, this was definitely, <laughs> like, five, six years ago and, and shit. But, uh, well, not not five, six, then. We haven't been out that long. But, um, yeah, nah, and then I just saw him. I was a fan of... Um, well, I'm still a fan of them. I, I look at them as like role models because of what they were able to do. Um, and so we just was like, yo, can we take a photo? <laughs> Which you never do. <laughs> so like, yeah. But it was just Killer Mike. Yeah. So I mean, we, we took a photo of him. Yeah, living legend. Yeah, for sure. Doing his thing. Um, okay, well, we've got another one uh, from the Instagram. I think this is uh, another moment where you guys were uh, so maybe signing some arms. Is that right? Yeah. You're definitely signing some arms. Yeah, all right. All right, what's going on? You guys out there? This probably group, a meet groupies and want greet. autographs. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this has to be a meet and greet. Yeah, and they probably asked us to sign fan. his arm and he shit. He probably was just like, yeah, let me sign, because we sign people's arms all the time and shit. And, um, so it's not like something that we remember exactly which arm this is. Yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, it was that a There's a lot. There's somewhere. so many arms in one's life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's somewhere like as the clothes we're wearing. <coughs> we're we're fleeing and shit. Um, if we didn't, like I don't it, know where this is. Yeah, I, I, I don't know either. Now, it been, yeah, get it. Bring maybe. us to, into this world a little more, though. Tell us about the meet and greets. Are, are there places <coughs> where meet and greets get crazy, or is the meet and greet always the same wherever you're at? Nah, sometimes it's like uh, people hundred to two hundred kids, yeah, and, yeah, and then sometimes it's like. 20 kids, but it's average around maybe like 75 kids, so it's just like, uh, same thing, it's no real, I mean, we've seen some weird shit, like, just yeah, weird people. Just fanning out shit, nothing too crazy. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's regular shit, like, oh my god, it's you guys, alright, yeah, nice, uh, <laughs> have a conversation, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty standard, yeah. Nothing shocking. Not not memorable. That was just like, oh, yeah, no, nothing I memorable. This for the rest of my life, like I, I, I forgot it already. So the meet and greet is not the place to look for the memorable moment, then. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, that no. seems reasonable. Nah. Let's, let's hope that meet and greets are not not on that level quite yet. <laughs> now we got another picture here. We got two houses and an underachiever's hat. What's wh where, where are we looking at right here? Oh, so that's me and shit. Yeah, I'm in the back. Uh, by my homie's uh, Furious Crib. Like, that's like a little area that we all go to to chill and like drink riders? and smoke. Uh, I was looking for that shit just now, care for Oh, the lighter? Well, guys, oh, I got one. it's important that we have a lighter. Actually, you're sitting on lighter. it right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, um, So you go chill out, post up in Flatbush. Now, for the uninitiated, why don't you walk us through, like, what, what is the vibe of Flatbush? How does Flatbush stand out from other parts of, of Brooklyn? It's a lot of Caribbean people, like, mashed into one area. Good um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's extremely Caribbean. It's like probably the most Caribbean place in like America. So it's like we grew up in um, basically the Caribbean, but just in New York. And uh, yeah, it's like an urban complex. It's tight. It's really tight. It feels almost like it's the size of like one neighborhood in California. <laughs> but it's like a whole like city pretty much. And it's, um, 
Yeah. He's just really tight, like compact, like <laughs> crowded, <laughs> crowded, diverse. Yeah. yeah. But um, probably some pretty good food. Off the flat bus, right? Food, for sure. Yeah. Best Caribbean food you can find in uh, probably America. Actually, it is the best Caribbean food you can find in America is in Flatbush. Now, what is what are the what would you if you had to give a top five? What are the top five Caribbean eats on Flatbush? Uh, Good Hope. Um, Sense of Mia. Sense of Mia. <laughs> uh, Fisherman Cove. Uh, Fisherman's Cove. Fuck yeah. Uh, um, bacon Tings. Yeah, Bacon Tings is um, nice. Um, there's a bunch. Damn, what's that's another one? No, like at a place like it's New like Hope. hundreds. It's hundreds of them. Yeah, like, what, are you, what, are you, what are you guys ordering? Is it different things from different spots? Right. Yeah. So what are they the all sell the same, they sell the same things, yeah. So they Everyone sell the same there. things, but someone's roti is better than someone yeah, else's yeah, roti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, there you right? go. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You gotta go to the Trinidadians to get some good the roti. Nice roti. The yeah. Trinid Trinidadians win the roti game. For sure, yeah, yeah. they're the creators. Not, Not the creators, but <laughs> Indian people created it. Yeah, but, facts. Uh, they definitely um, are some of the best uh, that you could go get for the roti. Yeah, bust up shot and doubles and um, all different types of styles of roti. They're like. I don't think any other country makes bus up shot or whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah, it's, that's Trinidad. They have their own like style of like really good roti. Yeah. Sounds fresh. Yeah. Okay, really but what is, what's another dish? What's another dish besides roti? Oxtails. What else? Oxtails, Oxtails too. Oxtails and yes. rice and peas. For sure, rice uh, and peas. Bacon, saltfish. Yeah, for the morning. Uh, yeah, that's what I get. Curry, oh, shrimp, but it's always sold out everywhere. Yeah, that'd be tight. To get the curry shrimp. <laughs> what time you gotta get there shrimp. to get the curry shrimp off flatbush? Probably, Probably open as soon when as it that opens, opens, like yeah. 10 a.m. style. Yeah. In the hour, yeah. Ooh. Facts, yeah. All right, all right. We gotta check for some curry shrimp for sure. For sure. Uh, um, so that the house that we were showing, uh, that's you in Flatbush. Uh -huh. uh, do you guys record? Do you guys record there? Mm -hmm. um, we're just chilling, kicking nah, it right. We don't record there anymore. We used to for like our earlier projects, but um, I think only one. Yeah. Home, like home Louisiana. studio kind of, kind of vibe? Maybe two, maybe Lords, Lords of Flappers too, right? Yeah. And bed style, I feel like. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. bed style for us. But um, um, that's just our, like, where we chill on the block. One of our homies lived there, so we go check him and drink at the bar. There's a bar in someone's backyard and shit. Yeah. And we just chill there, smoke and drink. Hang spot. Yeah. Um, we got another one from the Instagram. This one's a, a kind of psychedelic vision. Oh, um, shit. Oh, look at this. That. Yeah, this is um, Blessings in the Gray uh, 2. It was one of my mixtapes that uh, came out with a second one. But yeah, so I forgot the artist that did that shit. Damn, he's going to kill me. But Tron, <laughs> I think his name was Tron or some shit like that. Shout out to him. Now, what's going on in the image here? We got some different iconography. We got the <coughs> yin and the yang. We have some uh, <coughs> hieroglyphics. We got the city skyline. Did you have? Did you collaborate with the artist on it? Did you tell him what you kind of wanted, or he just kind of? I gave him the freedom design? to uh, express however he feels, as well as give him some ideas as well. Right. Um, he does like a lot of Egyptian style like art, so he did that to mine, and then I added the yin yang and uh, the Japanese sun, and there's hidden messages in there too. But, um, yeah. You gotta have a good hidden message or two. That's a good. That's a good like album cover <laughs> yeah, kind of rule, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah you know, we, how many hidden? Is that an adequate number of hidden messages? Yeah, there's a couple. That's good. <laughs> yeah. heads, the heads will figure it out. Uh, now we talked a little bit about meet and greets before. Uh, I think this next one is actually just of rocking a show. Uh, I'm not sure of the location. What happened at this show? Hmm. What the fuck is this? It's all. It's it's, it's, it's a blur, blur. man. <laughs> <laughs> is it a zombie show that had one? I don't know I don't what that know is, bro. That is. I don't even know what kind of shirt. We're like, what shirt is that? I don't know, bro. I don't think I've ever seen that shirt before. <laughs> I probably wore it to throw it out the, the same night type shit. I don't know. No, it's got to be recent because our hair is a cut. I don't but know. That man. don't mean shit because it could be really early also. Like a year ago. It could be. I feel like it was in. I don't know where the fuck we are, but um... let, me, uh, let me look closer. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this is I gonna be. This? this is a. In, this is an about that time investigative report. <laughs> oh, I, on I think our I investigative know where we report, are. we're gonna figure we out we're what there. happened in this Instagram photo. We're, we're in Europe somewhere. Um, that was we're that performing. really nice venue. Um, it's either that one or it's Europe though. It's the Europe tour that we just that had just passed. Um, I don't know where we are though, but it's somewhere in Europe, and yeah, that show is. We're doing a show. If you look closer, you might remember it was like a really crazy. Um, oh yeah, uh, like show like the way they're responding and shit. Now, do you guys prefer playing like a festival in a remote location, or are you like the like, kind of like urban club show more? 
in the city. Damn, they both. Uh, I, it's probably my favorite part of being yeah, a rapper. Yeah, facts. Me like, too. Uh, I like the intimate both of them shit. Are fire, but like, I think probably festivals. Just because mm. it's like, it's something crazy. Just like having like ten thousand people throw their energy at you while you're like throwing it back. It's just fire. Like having that for lack of a better word, control over people. But we, we working together because they control me too. So it's like we control each other. But like, so you just see like 10,000 people, oh, they're like going crazy. It's like, yeah, it's you. probably, I get more pumped for them, I think. Like, it's like, yeah. But it's harder because the stages be so big. Yeah, man, it's big. Like, we get tired. tired and, <laughs> shit. and it's hard to maintain that connection too because you're farther like the from the audience. Shit. Yeah, probably, yeah sure. that's why I, I kind of yeah. like the intimate shit a right. little more and shit. Yeah, I love those two and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Up close and personal and the yeah. stages are smaller. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, this one is not in an urban setting. I believe this one is a, a skyline with some nice trees. Oh, shit. It's one of my favorite places. Tell go. us about this favorite place. This is this is one of the reasons why I moved back to California because I was we was living here for three years and then I moved back to New York because I thought I missed New York. And then after one year, I instantly moved back to California. So um, this is one of the places. It's Elysian Park. It's like just a park out here. Yep. But like um, when I was living out here before, I used to live downtown and it was like five to ten minutes from like not even 10 minutes, like five minutes from where I was. So like I would spend a lot of time there. Even now, like most of the, the music I've written in the past like four years has been written there. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you could drive up to like different spots and just park and just fuck, well, you're not allowed to smoke, but, and just smoke and it's just like a fucking super view. So I guess I get inspiration from that. I guess creative juices. Yeah, but, um, the there you go. Person. Elysian Park juices. Yeah, it's elite facts. <laughs> Uncut. <laughs> Uncut. Fact. So yeah, it's just a place that I like to go. So we went there to shoot some stuff for the album. We actually shot the album cover there. Yeah, facts. And um, this is just a shot from um, one of the shots from uh, the album, the outtakes from the album cover shoot. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite places for sure. I love that. Now, going back to the album for a second, is there anything more you think people should be looped in in terms of what they should be expecting from this this new one? Um, yeah, it's completely. It's so funny because we people always say that, but it's it's completely different than music we ever made. It's, uh, uh, there's a lot of melody because we we got a lot of choruses from like singers, which we've never done before. So it's like probably like six songs of like singers, and then um, the. Uh, like it took a while for us to like make another album because like um like we wanted to like figure out what we wanted to make it about and like we were like like evolving ourselves I mean because we're getting older and shit like that so um like with this one it's just it's just it's growth yeah it's just like growth you know? where we are now like the concepts on there yeah. um it's so different than uh what we made not originally but like it's so much a lot of a lot of uh it's like focused on like more um transparency with us um rather than uh like what we're seeing it's more about us in a sense like uh what we were writing about um yeah because of the times we're in right now well not it sounded like like catastrophic but i mean like just because of like um our generation and like what's going on around us right now so it's like was based on that absolutely um well speaking of what's going on around us at about that time we like to do a segment we call roll the news we take some headlines from around the world um primarily ca cannabis headlines and we talk about them uh yeah. we're going to give a shout out to our sponsors right now uh before we enter roll the news candy pens they make excellent vaporizers they're chill they're great they're sexy they work uh, <laughs> check out Candy Pens, guys. Also, shout out to Swami Select, our up north cannabis plug, uh, growing beautiful outdoor cannabis uh, for years, uh, and it's some great stuff. So, digging in to Roll the News. Uh, the first story from tonight's installment of Roll the News, uh, weed behind the wheel, Canada's cops prepare to catch stoned drivers. Now, people like yeah. smoking weed, people like driving cars, there's not a breathalyzer in use right now like but people can just kind of roll up in you and tell you that you're stoned apparently canada who are federally legalizing cannabis uh have now implemented a protocol uh for how to catch stone drivers now if you guys were cops what would you say are the key lead indicators to see if someone's <laughs> stoned Eyes? Yeah, red eyes. <laughs> red or low eyes. That's, that's about it. Yeah, smell. The, yeah, smoke. 
I it's mean, pretty, pretty obvious. I mean, yeah, if you if you can't catch a stoner, you really, really are missing a couple of... Ash on his lap. Ash on his lap, <laughs> exactly. Uh, something. Like. Some nervous dumb <laughs> shit. <a> <laughs> um, so throughout Canada, 833 officers have now been certified in a DRE, Drug Recognition Expert Program, to identify impaired individuals. Nice. Can you imagine that class? Like, they're actually sitting in a classroom and they're like... Are their eyes red? <laughs> Do they smell like weed? Fact. That, I, that's a class you can actually take. That's crazy. I, I guess it's not to, if I could think of it, the other side, I guess they, where we like to smoke weed, so um, we wouldn't get caught, but like maybe someone who smokes weed like once a month, they're going to be a lot like higher than we might be, you know what I mean? So it might be some telltale signs from that guy more so than the the regular stoner, like in California or some shit like that. Like, and maybe they might be able to catch a few people, but the majority of people who smoke weed, they, they won't be caught. Like, yeah. caught. I think it's gonna work out, guys. Yeah. All right, they well, can catch some uh, idiots. Some shout like out to you for High school girl, weed. you know what I mean? Smoke for the first time, yeah, yeah. Wow, hops out no, the car, her no, eyes no, are no, literally yeah. bloodshot. Yeah. I'm a stoner at Vizy, you know what I mean? Like, are yeah. <laughs> prepared. Yeah, like. She might not be prepared, you, you know what I mean? Like, we got all that shit. Like, munch, well, maybe like for munch. I don't know. Yeah, they probably try to just catch kids. It's probably just catch a bunch of kids. Yeah. Like, early stoners. Kids, don't be dumb. These <laughs> folks are trained out here. They're going to get your ass. Canada, yeah. watch out. Legal, legal cannabis that coming is next Canadian week. It's, it's a big moment. It's a big moment. We got another story. On well, I got a question, though. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, hold on real quick. Does that mean that fucking... Um, they're not gonna be dicks about like weed anymore at the border. No, nah, that's stupid. Of course, you can't you can't bring shit over the border. Because the border is controlled by the federal yeah, government. Yeah, that was a very so, stupid yeah. question. Yeah, I apologize. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but that being said, we did have a story from last week that you can now legally fly with weed on all flights in yeah. Canada. Yo, we, okay. In Canada? Yeah, so you can just get nice. on the airplane oh, with man. your weed. Canada is so no, progressive. <laughs> Thank you, Canada. Have you guys played a lot of shows in Canada? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, we love. Oh, that's I, one of our places too. Like, we like, like to 20. That shit. Yeah, Toronto's I mean, I, cool. And that might be in the top 20 places. No, I'm yeah. joking. Now, Toronto's fire. Toronto, I like Vancouver and Toronto. Toronto's more fire than. Vancouver. I don't know. It's, a, it's an argument. But it's more, which, if you like more nature, I guess. Yeah, facts. Toronto's more like a New Yorkish type city. city. Yeah. Vancouver's more like you breathe in and it smells like beautiful trees, like, it's like every Cali breath there. Exactly, kind of like Cali in New York. Um, yeah, Toronto, Montreal, fucking uh, some other oh, weird Calgary. Yeah, Ottawa, Calgary. We play Calgary, Ottawa. Uh, um, where else we play? We played all over Canada. Yeah. Shout out to Canada. You're making weed legal. You're keeping the streets safe. Watch out for these stone drivers. We have another story, speaking of Canada, on today's installment of Roll the News. Uh, in fact, the Canadian legalization has Canadians so excited. This headline is telling us that there may be a cannabis supply shortage. So if you guys didn't yeah. know already, Canada, cannabis is going legal in Canada next week, uh, completely federally legal. Uh, so you'll be anyone over the age of 18 will be able to buy it from a store. Uh, there's going to be a shortage of weed. What do you think of that? Lies. Guess Lies. You think there's going to be no weed shortage? Hell no. Hell no. But they got plenty? Impossible. Yeah, you can, can I grow get indoor, you can grow outdoor. Canada got hella land. They don't even use most of their land, if I'm not mistaken. Like... <laughs> so like they just gotta get on they growing shit and just grow more shit. Grow it up. Yeah, it's a fucking excuse. It's, 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 this, 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 this new story was planted by fucking some like a big corporation. Trying who, to like, sell more weed? Yeah, who's getting ready to like grow like whatever fucking mind tons trashy. of fucking weed and shit. And, yeah. Guys, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's warranted. This could be an about that time fake news alert. Yeah. Was there a story planted a conspiracy, a conspiracy of sorts to sell more Canadian weed by yeah. making us think there might be a shortage. <laughs> yeah. You better get to the store now and stock up because yeah. next week there's going to be a shortage. <laughs> they ought to have a nice boost in their economy. With there the, you with, go. With, That's within true. the first uh, three months of, uh, of their, their business opening. Canada, shout out to you. Shout out to legalizing weed. I don't think there's going to be a weed shortage. I think everyone will be able to get their weed. <laughs> Nobody get stressed out because that's the opposite of the point of what, what's going on. So um, anyway, exciting shit. Canada doing their thing. Roll the news. Shout out again to Candy Pens. Shout out again to Swami Select. We're doing our thing. Now, guys. Shout out Candy Pens. Shout out Candy Pens. <coughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful product. Hell Do your yeah. thing. You can put your own oil in it. Where oh, it's the weed, John. <laughs> oh, whatever you want. You could put e 
liquid in it. You could put some sort of infused oil in it uh, that you know. This is nice. You might use. It's pretty <coughs> slick, right? Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. And then you can have multiple cartridges when you want to change your vibe. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I like yeah, that. Slick. Shout out candy pens. You yeah. know, approve. Sounds like the a general approval. Yeah, I like that shit. Good shit. Anyway, guys, we've checked in with what's going on around the world. We've checked in what's going on with you guys uh, and all the music you have coming up. We also like to make sure that we check in with the stars. We look at the horoscope. We look at everyone's astrology. We get a little bit more metaphysical. What we do, we turn on the rock crystal lamp. Can you can you guys click that lamp on? Right there. There you go. Perfect. Oh, did that not work? Nope. Uh, it's not plug good. in. It's cool. Sometimes you got to plug in a salt crystal lamp. Boom. <laughs> I have one of these. There you go. You know, I think I got I one say too. We get into the, get into a mil, more mystical state now. <laughs> Issa, you're a Leo, A.K. You're a Gemini. Yes. Okay. So what we did is we went to your horoscopes, and you know how the horoscope can be. Do you guys follow the horoscope at all? Do you read your horoscope at all? Not. Nah. No. But you know how it, you know how it is. They write. Yeah. And they say this is you, and you expect for there to be great fortune or something like that, right? Yeah, like yeah. the daily ones, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. So the daily ones. We took some different sentences from these horoscopes one describing you and another describing you i'm gonna read them and then you guys will guess is this an isa or an ak whose chart does it come from you ready for that <laughs> yeah yeah okay ready so element number one has an eye on good health practices which of the two of you is keeping it the most healthy do i say him is it Issa quality? Yeah, probably. Hell yeah. I've been on my health. Yeah, you're shit. right. That was that was an Issa. Hell yeah. Issa <laughs> Leo. That's kind of funny they got Keep that one. Right now, I've been, been drinking Jamba Juice, juice every day. <laughs> Look, shout out Jamba, Jamba juice. juice. Yeah, trying to keep Look. it healthy. No more eggs and bacon, Sponsor. whatever. Yeah. Nah, hell no. I mean, eggs and bacon too. I just like the way that shit tastes, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Jamba Juice. It has a vibe. It has a vibe. It's All good right. for school, actually. But yeah, continue. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, you guys, you guys nailed that one. Number one, that's an Issa. Uh, okay, number two, accustomed to causing a stir. Wherever they go, they gotta be. Who's me. who's rolling in and fucking shit up? They gotta be easy. Yeah, I mean, it could be so? either of us, but just I'm just so mean. Yeah. Like yeah. you're yeah. such I'm a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but that doesn't mean when you enter a room, you, you yeah, say that's what's what up I to saying, everyone. Yeah. You know, oh, like okay, that's what you, you mean. You just like yeah. the life, the life of the room. Oh nah, he, no, he definitely could be the life of the room for sure. Yeah, at times. Okay, so that's more of an A. Well, that I'll just tell you guys that one's AK. Yeah, that came from AKs. All right, here comes number three. Okay has little interest in the practical aspects of life. Which, one's of you, which one of you is just like, doesn't care about pragmatic shit? Damn. Maybe, but you... I'm a full-time student yeah. right now, so, so am I... Me. Maybe me. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's AK. Yeah. Wow, this, it's going to, you guys are kind of nailing this. The psychics and shit. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> you, and, you really know your horoscopes. All right, number four. Never lets the love of luxury interfere with their personal budget. Okay, which one of you is the oh good budgeter? Who oh keeps my the God. budget? Neither tight? of us. I mean, neither of us is a good budgeter. All right, all right. Well, that one may, that uh, one may be that just like a, a way to go. It, in the horoscope, <laughs> it says it's Issa. Um, okay, okay. It's okay. keeping a better budget. Or it's not. Never would let luxury interfere with your personal well, we budget. Like, no, I've been on that, though. I don't buy it, clothes and shit because yeah, yeah. I got way more expenses right now. Yeah, yeah. I can't allow it to get yeah, involved because I have so many pills right <laughs> now. So <laughs> I've been buying a lot of um, like cool things. I haven't bought anything new in a long time, so yeah, it could definitely be. Um, it's not something I always do, but if this is just a daily one, then like it would make sense right now. I like it. Uh, okay, number five prefers making friends with people who enjoy conversation as much as they do. Who, which one of you guys really oh likes conversation? Me? It, yeah. can't, it can't be me. Lisa. I don't know. It says AK. No. You got to look at his, his, uh, My, like, his, uh, his, his going down sign. <laughs> What's that called? Yo, babe, what is it? Rising and, uh, rising mm. and moon. Oh, rising and moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that one maybe yeah, that one's... a little bit off. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the now, fuck I'm now saying. Now, here's, here's one yeah. more from tonight's installment of Astrology Time. Is it Issa? Is it AK? You number six. One. Far more practical than they appear. Who's more practical than they seem? Uh, <laughs> maybe. No, I'd say Issa. All right. Well, it, the, the horoscope says I'm, it's Issa. I, I'm practical in, in like, like I seem practical. 
Oh no, I don't. That's a fact. Yeah. 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 You don't seem practical, but you actually yes, are. Yes, exactly. So yeah, that's what yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, there we go. I think, I'm I think the horoscope did an okay job, and you guys were pretty good at deciphering it. Yeah, fine. Yeah. 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 Right. Not bad. Shout out, shout out to the horoscope. Yeah. Now, on about that time, we'd like to make sure we give you guys an opportunity to tell everyone out there in the land of Mary Jane what's going on with you, what they should be checking for, what they can expect from you uh, on the horizon. Uh, new music, um, yeah. obviously. We're trying to drop like. 10 projects within the next like year. Sure. <laughs> Not 10, but as many as we can. So we're trying to just, uh, we're in a creative, the creative juices are flowing. So I'm just trying to put out as much music. We got the album coming November. Yeah. November 2nd. 2nd, and then we got. Um, After the Rain. Yeah. Lords of Flappish coming Lord probably Flappish. somewhere at the yeah, end good. of the year. That's another project. It's like the third installment in like a series that we do. And then uh, next year is touring all year. Um, so yeah, we're back on the road and we'll see all you guys like around the different cities and shit around the world. And uh, yeah, just look out for more music, more tours and uh, yeah. That's it. Well, yeah. uh, good shit guys. I really appreciate you coming through once again. Uh, shout out to the underachievers. Shout out to oh, shit. Andy Pens. Let uh, me shout do a out shout out to Swami Select. Right, shout, shout out to my fucking friends, Famous Genetics. It's yeah. a fucking company that we love and shit. They got all types of great shit. And uh, you can fucking uh, find them everywhere. Famous Genetics. There you go. Yeah. We love the weed. We love the good music. We love the good times, guys. Thanks so much for checking in on Thank about you, that time. Peace. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah. Yeah.